Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today we're talking about specifically tuning your fuel pump to have a higher idle, but overall just winterizing your Mark 1 Rabbit. Today I'm taking care of a couple things, just, just real quick. For one, it's getting cold out and I haven't quite sorted out the right thermostat, fan thermostat. This is goes in your radiator and it turns the radiator fan on at a certain temperature. So right now I put one in here that I thought was 180 degrees and it comes on at 160 which is way too cold and on a hot day that means it runs all the time because again way too cold so this one I think it says it's 92 to 87 C we're gonna put this in so that's gonna help me not overcool my car and then on the other side of that I am going to increase the idle of my engine in the winter time for warm-up purposes and for overall cabin shake <laughs> You know, I'm not afraid to say it, the inside of these cars vibrates immensely with this engine in here. You know, the little diesel shakes like a mother. Uh, and so the dashboard rattles and my steering wheel rattles and everything rattles, especially when it's extra cold out. So today I'm going to go ahead and raise that idle to a smooth point for the interior, but also so that the engine can stay warm and get warmed up faster and overall just be smoother. And while we're at it, Check your tire pressure. I just did all four of my tires. The last time I checked them was probably June when it was 100 degrees and today it's about 45. And I had 12 and 13 PSI and 20 in the rear. So definitely worth checking now that it's getting colder outside. You want to just make sure your vehicle is ready for winter. Well, I tried to set up the camera to a decent angle for everyone to view, but I couldn't get it to work. So. You know, what you need to know is that the fan thermostat looks like this. If you have an OEM wiring harness, it'll have a plug that covers the whole thing. And it's down on the driver's side bottom corner of your radiator. All I'm gonna do is take it out and put a new one in. And you don't need to drain your cooling system to do this. And the reason I say that, I mean, you could, you could, Take this as an opportunity to, you know, exchange fluids and la -tita. So the reason I say that is all you're doing is taking out a plug and putting in a plug. So if you don't have like the slowest reaction time in the world, you can do it and only spill like a drop of coolant. It's really not too bad. Threads are kind of binding in an annoying way. Please just come out. All right, we're almost there. So when I'm confident, yeah, like right there, I'm like actively dripping coolant. So get your next one ready, hold your old one in and just swap. And you know, I could have used a bucket. That wouldn't have hurt, but we're good. Here's the old one. And if you wanna make it easier on yourself, you can use a 29 millimeter socket to put this in there. Though I'd be careful if you have a socket on it, I wouldn't tighten this to the moon. You got brass on aluminum and neither wants to be torqued to 400 foot pounds. Just tight it, torque, torque it snug so that the gasket does its job. Clips back on and you're good to go. All right, part one, all complete. We replaced the radiator thermostat. thermostat. This should kick on at a higher temperature now, which means the car won't run as cold. Okay, while I did a terrible job filming that, I promise you I'll do a better job filming this. But uh, this is the top of your fuel pump. It's pretty self-explanatory if you just look at how the mechanism works. You hit the gas, gas pulls on the cable, this thing moves, this thing moving is actually your throttle. Moves a collar in there that controls how much fuel goes in the engine, la -ti ta And what holds this lever at a certain endpoint is the screw right here. And so all you need to do is reason that, well, what stops it at a certain endpoint is the idle screw. And you would be correct. This bigger screw over here on the backside is your power screw. We don't need to touch that today. We're just gonna increase idle. So to do that, we gotta take off the lock nut and then you need a flathead screwdriver. All in all, pretty simple. You can try to struggle at it with, you know, pliers and a bunch of weird things. Um, and what you will find is that the easiest wrench to loosen the lock nut with is an exact 10 mil and you kind of have to like I don't I don't like to take the fuel lines off that's too much work 
I'm just trying to squeeze this in here and get like a half turn. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't turn it much. But what you'll find is if you just turn it a little, you don't even have to like back it off all the way. You'll be able to turn the screw and then we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the car so that we can actually get a real feel for what this adjustment is doing. All right, so this is what the outside of the car is like with it running. And this is that idle. And this is what the inside of the car is like. You can uh, probably see my dashboard shaking. And just kind of hear, just hear the rattles for a second. Okay. And then imagine it being like, cold and it rattles all way worse because it's actually idling even lower. So now I'm going to use the accelerator pedal to kind of guesstimate where I want to be. And I'm not saying to go nuts, like you don't need to be idling at like 1200 RPM. You know, I don't have an RPM gauge in here, the, you know, Volkswagen just gave me a clock, uh, but if this is like 500 to 600 RPM, then I want to be like right here. Maybe right there, which is like 800. So, and see no more dashboard rattle. Also, another part of setting your idle speed is your oil pressure. So, when we're warmed up and I'm idling at this speed that it's currently set to, this oil pressure will fall to about 20 PSI, which is fine. If your oil pressure is really low when you're idling, you can increase your idle speed and it will increase your oil pressure. So that's another kind of benefit to increasing idle speed is you actually get more oil pressure at idle. And again, we're gonna go for like... So we're turning the screw. go check check to see how it is so this is what the interior sounds like the microphone in this video is on my chest okay and I would say we could go a hair lower And what you'll notice is, while doing this, is that you kind of have to get in and out of the car a bit. To figure out, to figure out if what you're doing is working, because when you're out here, it sounds different. All right, I'm digging that. In which case we need to. All right, so now that you're happy with it, and again, it's kind of a back and forth because on the inside, it actually sounds different than when you're out here adjusting it. So you kind of want to get in and check what it feels and sounds like in the cabin, you want to make sure you retighten this so you don't just lose the adjustment you made. And the other thing to keep in mind too, most of you, this won't be a problem, but if your fuel screw is tuned super duper skates, if you have it turned in a lot, it's going to make your throttle more sensitive and it could give you rev hang, especially if you now increase your idle speed. My fuel screw right now is not at a crazy point so that when I increase these RPMs, I'm not worried about revving my car and it rev hanging and never coming back down, but that is something you wanna think about if you fall into the 
very tuned category of people. There we go. This is my winterization, and now we're kind of complete. We did tire pressure, we did fan speed, and we raised our idle. Car should be just cherry. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. I will be working on my TDI engine coming soon, so more videos in that vein. Keep on trucking. Appreciate you.